Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the July 16, 2024 Council meeting. Anyone in the audience needs amplified headphones, please raise your hand. Not seeing any. Uh, let's rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Don, will you roll call, please? Yes, I will. Council Member Gillette. Here. Council Member Stern. Here. Member Gilmore. Here. Mary Lillian. Here. Deputy Mayor Sherman. Here. Council Member Sapp. Here. And Council Member Gutierrez. Here. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. Council, have any board reports to share? Oh, I'm sorry, maybe the late changes to the agenda. All right. Do we have any board reports to share? Just want to say briefly that the uh, Chief of Police, myself, and city manager met with a delegation of, of um, African country credit unions. There's another name for it. I've already forgotten it. Uh, it was a very nice visit with them. Uh, we exchanged uh, little gifts with each other, and uh, they went into the board meeting, but it was really nice to uh, to greet them to Shelton. So, uh, Chief, do you have anything you want to? No, you said it was. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. But All right. Anything else? All right. Are we all ready for reading the consent agenda? All right, Donna, please read the consent agenda. Okay. Doctors numbered 111066 through 111094 and EFT payment numbers 466 through 480 and a total amount of $160,277.59. Vouchers numbered 11101 through 11129, and EFT payment numbers 481 through 497, in the total amount of $134,224.12. Thank you, Donna. Welcome. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? Mr. Mayor, move to approve the consent agenda as read. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. At this time, members of the public are invited to make public comment on any related topic. Donna, anyone have a public comment? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. Our first speaker is Dr. Dewitt. Dr. Dewitt. Jackie Jewett, Shelton, Washington. Transparency. Transparency is operating in such a way that it's easy for others to see what actions are performed. Transparency implies openness, communication, and accountability. So my big question is, when are we gonna have a public forum, a hall, a town meeting, so that we can actually hear what the public is saying and we can actually get questions that are answered. The last one we had was kind of like going around from booth to booth to booth, didn't learn anything, because nobody wanted to answer any questions. I don't know why. Is it because we don't have transparency? I, I don't know. I'm just asking that question. Leadership. A true leader connects and inspires and unites people, leading them down the right path while focusing on doing what is right. It's creating a culture of doing what is right, things in the right way. Mayor. The mayor is the chief executive officer of the city. In this role, the mayor is responsible for the general welfare of the city. The mayor also fulfills an executive role by seeing that the laws are enforced and that city officers and employees are properly doing their jobs. You know what? I'm more frustrated, sad, let's be transparent here. I'm angry. I'm angry because I come here and to be transparent, I don't like speaking in front of people. I don't. And I do it because I am upset. I'm upset and I don't know what else to do. I know that my, my words go on deaf ears sometimes in one ear and out the other. And I don't understand what it's seriously gonna take to actually understand how we feel. We are not holding public town hall meetings. We're not able to ask questions. I can talk to you for my three minutes, but I don't get any answers. And so 
I know, you know, like there's problems we're dealing with. My business is my house. I pay for it. I pay taxes. I pay the mortgage. I pay water. I pay power. I pay rent or not rent, but you know what I mean? Everything I pay for. It's my house. It's my house. So what? Why don't we create an encampment in Terrace Heights? Why don't we let them go over there and still power and water and hide garbage and defecate and shit on the sidewalk so when I walk up the front door, there it is. I'm sure people in Terrace Heights have a shovel. Scoop it up off your own damn sidewalk. Really? Pissing, shitting on garbage cans? Really? You want to take your garbage out after that happens? People lurking after dark. Our cameras go off 24 seven. After dark. Do we want those people lurking in your neighborhood? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Next is the Hewitt. Dean Jewett, lifelong Mason County member. That's a tough act to follow. Obviously, there's some emotions. People are pissed. There's a lot of people, a lot of business people that we chat with that don't want to come in here. Can any of you guess why? Because they get labeled as the hard asses. We're the ones that don't like the nonprofits, you know, the poor homeless people, the poor street people. You know, what about the business people? What about our efforts they don't want to come in here because it goes in one ear and out the other they don't want to be bamboozled they don't want to have a bunch of bullshit blowing up their ass you know i just had to chase somebody down to brewer park that was on our sidewalks digging through our dumpsters isn't there a fine for that isn't there an illegal dumping fee mark of 500 dollars? but nobody does anything who cares about it, right? Because you call in, nothing happens. Where's code enforcement? Where's the people? So I tracked the individual down to Brewer Park and confronted him. I know you're not supposed to do that. I know chief doesn't like it. I know his officers don't like it. I know dispatch doesn't like it, but I'm frustrated. What am I supposed to do? So I go down there and confront the individual. Goes, goes off, berserk, sideways spitting yelling screaming people coming up spitting on my truck throwing stuff at my truck throwing stuff at me spitting on me that's assault i wonder if the mayor would like it if i huffed a loogie on him i don't think he would okay you guys think i make this stuff up this stuff happens every single day to the people that are downtown it's embarrassing you know so that individual finally got arrested. And you know what? When the police got there to talk to him, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, officer. This gentleman came through Brewer Park and he was antagonizing us. It's weird how they can act normal when there's an authority figure there, but when any citizen or anybody else comes around, it's completely chaos. I felt threatened, I felt worried. It was a good thing that I practiced my second amendment. Do I ever want to use my second amendment in Brewer Park? Absolutely not. That is the last thing that I would ever want to do. But you all, by lack of enforcement and lack of leadership within the council, and I don't mean all the council, I mean a couple people. I'm looking at them right now. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Miguel, how you doing? You Why don't you take care of your- I'm making interactions with the audience. Oh, exactly. You're wasting my time. No, I can't. No. I'll do my time. Can we put my seconds back on, please? Right. Let's finish. So anyway, it's ridiculous. Let's step up to the plate and make some positive changes for everybody so that I don't have to get up here and you don't have to listen to me. Best way to do that is have two people resign. <laughs> no. Back at you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Super hugs, super hugs, my friends, super hugs. Yeah, why don't you take care of your house and get it up on the post the list? Okay. This is a business meeting, come on. Don, anyone else? Um, then he needs to be removed. He totally violated his duties okay. right now. This is our business meeting. Let, <clears throat> he violated it. There's a, there's a council here. He violated it. Don, and, no, is anyone else on that? No, there is. He intentionally antagonized me by waving at me. Intentionally. Come on, let, it, let us continue. Maybe he should be removed. Well, you anybody want to remove Miguel from the meeting? 
Oh, nobody's going to stand up. I move to, I move to remove Miguel from the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Do I have a vote? Uh, there's a motion and a second. Remove Miguel Gutierrez from the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Is there four? <clears throat> uh, wait, I want to roll call vote, please. Okay. George? Aye. Melissa? Aye. Tom? No. No. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Next on the agenda is a presentation from Finance Director Mike Gibbons. Thank you, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and members of Council. Tonight is the financial report for the month of May. So just a couple of other updates from finance. The 2025 budget development is well underway. We really start that in May and June, and then July and August, the work is happening in earnest. Department directors and other staff members are working hard to get the budget prepared so that what you and the public have is a very well thought out document. Um, we just closed the month of June this week, so we have that 50% look at the fiscal year. So while I'm gonna focus on May, we're able to start looking for estimating purposes at 50%. It makes kind of a nice way for us to really see what projects are going to be completed, what projects aren't, what expenditures maybe we thought were gonna happen, we need to really be thinking about next year. So a lot of thought and work is going into developing next year's budget. The city manager and I talked this week, we'll be convening the finance committee of the council um, early next month to start taking a look at things. So we'll have um, a lot of detail for you in the coming weeks. So let's take a look at the May financial report. We know more in May, obviously, than we did in January. Our estimates are able to get a little bit more accurate. Um, it, I think that if you take a look here on page one, I have it up on the screen. The estimated net revenue less expenditures is showing that Revenue is, we're estimating anyway, to exceed expenditures by just over $363,000. So that's really um, a positive for us. We're accomplishing a lot, but we're also able to see where our revenues are coming in more accurately at this point in the fiscal year. Naturally, we have first half property taxes in and that helps a lot. So when we go from estimating to actual, it just helps give us a little bit more backup in what we're predicting because we want we don't wanna be off on that. We don't wanna overestimate. We tend to be a little bit more conservative in finance. So I feel like what you're seeing there is looking um, pretty darn close to where we'll see it be this year. The ending fund balance breakdown, I wanted to spend just a moment on that. Our 20% of current year budgeted expenditures is reserved per city policy. Um, as a reminder, it's part of our policy so that we're not only good stewards of public funds by having that reserve for unexpected emergencies, it could be an economic downturn that we might need to tap that, but it also allows us to have sufficient cash to meet seasonal cash flow shortfalls because we do get you know, a big portion of our revenue for the general fund comes in the form of property taxes, which is just distributed twice a year. So in managing our cash flow, it allows us to be able to pay our bills, our employees without having to do any kind of short-term borrowing. So just as a kind of reminder, sometimes that amount looms large, but it ebbs and flows with how we are using the cash in the city. But we're well positioned, I think, with that 20% policy um, in place. On page two of the financial report, just to take a, 
a look at kind of where the general fund revenues are. Um, you'll notice we're estimating close to realizing budget, if not over budget in most of these categories. And so I'm pleased with that. I think it shows um, a strength in our local economy. We're estimating um, full realization of property tax um, revenue. Um, that of course is due to the levy. So that's a pretty straightforward one to know about. But when you get down to um, sales and use tax, that's coming in just about right where we are predicting it. Um, as I've said before, there's not a lot of fluctuation in our sales tax in the city, um, but I think knowing that it's not falling um, is an indicator that the economy is holding steady, which is a good sign. Um, on page four, there's other important information in here, but I, I'm just picking out some of these spots to take a look at. On page four, we present a general fund year-to-year -year comparison with revenue and expenditures, um, in particular by line item or, or category or department, if you will. Um, this is a nice area to look at comparisons in prior years. So if you take a look at, for instance, where we're estimating our sales and use tax to be, um, it's picking up a little bit. Um, but it holds pretty darn steady. There's just not a lot of change in that. Um, you can see where some of those other lines are. You can also see down in the general fund where the expenditures are happening. Um, on page five of the financial report, we present a month-to-month -month comparison. So as I've said before, on this Sorry for moving that so much. On this one, I like to look at it because it really can show where you're at um, for that same month um, going back a couple of years so that we can really take a look at where are the expenditures, not only by department, but also in revenue. Where are those kind of landing and, and where are they off maybe? Um, sometimes it's a little hard to um, interpret things when some of the lines are grant related, but in particular, again, property tax, sales tax, utility tax. Um, we naturally expected B&O tax to be up. Um, as I mentioned last month, I think we, we've struggled a bit to make sure that um, our regular payers of that are, are remitting the right amount. We're following up with folks, and I think it's um, looking better. I don't think we'll be too far off budget on that, but again, it's a little bit hard to predict because our annual payers um, won't come in until the beginning of next year. So I think once we have some data going off of that, um, we'll be able to have a realistic look at where that budget should be. I'm pretty conservative right now in the estimate for 2025 as I was for this 2024 budget on B&O tax. Um, on page seven, this is a page um, I think uh, we focus on quite a bit. It's our estimated fund balances across all city funds. So starting with the general fund, working through all of the other funds, including water, sewer, and storm. Everything's looking really good. A lot is happening in the city with the capital funds, as you've seen work around um, happening. So those drawdowns of those are somewhat due to that. We're very fortunate to be receiving grant money to help with that, but there's a lot happening. Down towards the bottom on the citywide FTE, not a whole lot changed from the April report. Um, we had one um, more vacancy down in the other funds, so it went up from two to three. So our total citywide vacancy went up from 7.5 in April to 8.5. Um, in May, so that's holding pretty steady. We lag, I mean, we're lagging now on this about six weeks. We know a little more in the middle of July, some positions have been filled. We know, um, I mean, two started in the month of July, so this will change a little bit as it goes forward. Um, we continue to work diligently on making sure our grants and contracts are billed for. Um, July is that quarterly billing time where we're looking back and billing for April, May, and June. Um, that really keeps um, the cash coming in on those. So I wanna give credit to the finance staff that does that work. Um, 
we had a call today with our um, public funds investment portfolio consultant. Um, we try to do that regularly, regularly just to make sure our investments are in the right position. Um, we are invested in a way um, to make sure we're earning the most interest, but as with all public funds, um, we have to follow specific policies and laws. So our funds are invested safely with little to no risk with liquidity so that we can have access to the funds quickly without paying any kind of penalty. We're looking pretty good. I think the read on the economy is what we're most interested in because the local government investment pool where we hold quite a bit of our investment right now is earning unprecedented um, amounts because of the way the interest structure is. As soon as the Fed makes some movement on that, that'll change a bit and we'll work towards getting some of the city funds structured in a way that we're well-timed. Um, but most of our interest as I had a department director say recently, how come the interest is so high on this amount? And it's because the LGIP is just earning this unprecedented amount right now. So um, it, it pays to have that short-term investment. But I'm sharing this largely just so you know, we keep our eye on that in finance to make sure that um, we're watching where those funds are getting the most earnings as we can on that um, investment that we hold um, for our public. So that's all the comments I have formally on the May financial report. Comments or questions? Uh, thank you and your staff, city manager. Uh, things didn't look this good at the beginning of the year or, or the end of last year as well. Um, so I'm pretty excited and looking forward to, to yeah, keep this going, balanced budgets, keep this going. And I know that we have some unreserved money here that we will need to look at here in budget season, you know, like roof and some other things. But uh, I think that's coming conversation. We will certainly discuss that through the through the subcommittee and at a forthcoming study session so the council understands the needs that we have ongoing and in the future that we need to plan for so we're not caught off guard, not able to maintain our infrastructure and meet our obligations. Yep. Well, thank you. Anybody else have any comments or questions? All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. A business item is a resolution to accept to grant funds from Wallace and Union Boulevard section, intersection, capital project manager, Darren Nix has dealt for it. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem, Council. <clears throat> I bring forward to you uh, some more uh, grant money. Uh, this is specific to the Wallace Neyland um, Shelton Springs intersection. Um, what we're doing is this is more of a kind of just process that we have to go through. What we're trying to do is realize the 650,000 that we've been granted. So our first step is to get in front of the council and get approved so that we can then start going in design and other things. Um, this particular intersection um, has been uh, has had some interest uh, in the long term, but uh, recently as well, just with regard to level of service and how that intersect intersection functions. Um, there was some initial discussion about potentially putting a roundabout there. There's also been discussions of doing some signal upgrades. Um, we also talked this afternoon about maybe doing some signal adjustments with regard to the timing. Um, I guess the bottom line that I need to bring to the council is that we need to come back to you. What we'd like to do is accept this money, um, but as far as the future design, um, we're still kind of want to have more discussion with you guys with regard to the notion of a roundabout versus um, a signal. If you get a chance, I mean, you're out, take a look at the intersection when you go through it. Um, the cost difference is significant. Uh, uh, roundabouts are about $4 million. The uh, identified improvements uh, as far as the signal are about one and a half million dollars. So we do have the $650,000 that we have, not enough to do the signal nor the roundabout, um, but then we also have some additional monies uh, that we got from the legislature that is very specific to roundabout. So um, I need to come back to you and give more options, but tonight all we wanna do is uh, start the process to get these monies accepted so that we then can start scoping out design and what we're going to do. So if there's any questions. Lastly, this is very old money. Um, it was awarded in the 1921 biennium. Um, so we want to get going and local programs has also said, get this, get the money um, tagged and start using it. 
2021. 2021. <laughs> 2021. No, the, the 2019 through 2021. Oh, 21. Yeah. yeah. Old money. All right. Do we do we have a motion? I move to place resolution number 1341-0724 under the consent agenda for August 6, 2024 council meeting. All right. I'll move to questions. No. All right. We have a motion and a second to, to place resolution number 1341-0724 on the consent agenda for August 6th council meeting. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there are no action items tonight. So we have a city manager report tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council. Uh, just a couple things for me tonight. Uh, the city will have a booth this Friday at the Chambers Business Expo in Bide, Mason County, I believe is the title, um, down on Railroad Avenue. We don't know where we're located yet, but it will be staffed to the duration with city staff. Uh, we certainly are focusing on outreach for our comprehensive plan and want as many individuals in our community to come up and talk to us and give us feedback about kind of their visions of Shelton over the next 20 years, but we'll certainly talk about projects and recreation programs or any other questions that might come about from the community. Um, speaking of recreation programs and other movies in the park series this Friday at Neyland Park, I think they started just after nine o'clock uh, last Friday. So hopefully it's getting darker a little earlier, like about 10 minutes a day or so. And you can start start a little earlier. So Very successful indeed. Yeah. Full park. Terrific. Uh, I was contacted by um, the U.S. Postal Service on Friday, just a phone call. They wanted to assure us that they were continuing to look at the lease agreement um, and will get back to us fairly soon uh, with a counter proposal. But I'm hoping that uh, that comes to fruition here in the next few weeks and I have something to bring back to council for consideration. And then as we talked about briefly before the meeting started, uh, we have a fifth Tuesday this month, two weeks ahead, but um, July, I almost said November, July 30th um, is the fifth Tuesday of the month and we don't hold meetings that month. So you have a free Tuesday at the end of this month in July. So that is all I have for you tonight. Um, question for city manager. All right. Council, have any slide for discussion? All right. Do Council member. I want a motion that we suspend 20.388-030 section A of temporary assignment until December 31st, 2024. So we have time for public input and we can address some issues and concerns that our community members have. Right. Oh, I can read it like you. Okay. We have a motion and a second to suspend two zero or no, I'm sorry, a motion that we suspend two zero dot three eight dot zero three zero section A of the temporary sign code December 31st, 2024. So we have time for public to input so we can address some of the concerns community members have. So um oh I'm sorry, comments or questions? Discussion, <laughs> right? You want to do public comment portion or yes, let's do the public comment. Anybody want to sign up for the public comment on this sign code? All right. Okay. So we have motion in a second. Uh comments. Mayor, if you don't mind, let me clarify section A just for the public's benefit, sure. council's benefit. So 238030 is the section on temporary signs. Um, and temporary sign compliance has a number of items that they would comply with, including size and repair and um, placement. Section A of this code states the maximum size of a temporary sign shall be 16 square feet. And if I can give a reason. So the reason I'm bringing this motion up is I recently learned that our sign ordinance prohibits the sponsorship of banners from companies who donate to our youth sports teams. These have been a much needed source of revenue that supports our kids and living healthy lives. As a father of an athlete, I know how much of these programs are held together with shoestring budgets. I know how hard our student athletes work on the field, and I don't want to be the reason that they don't have that opportunity. After receiving numerous complaints from business owners, elected officials, and private residents about this part of the ordinance, I believe it is what our community wants. Before the end of the year, I'd like to see a committee put together to find out what our community members do want, and with that information in hand, we can choose how to best move forward in the new year. Would, would this section or 
for you would this section resolve the issue of being able to put up sponsorship signs like, like just the size just the size yeah so. there's still there's still a four sign temporary sign per parcel limit within the code this would eliminate the size now it eliminates all sizes our current our current maximum 16 square feet it it opens the door to any size um, which may lead to building code issues or something like that depending on what somebody wanted to put up but we can't regulate on content that that remains the same okay. there's a supreme court decision so that whatever size sign could say whatever you want it could be a you know, a business sponsoring, it could be a campaign sign, it could be a for sale sign, a garage sale sign, it could say as colorful language as one can think of. And for immediate action, we are just only limited to our ability to suspend this line and we can't institute a new one. Um, to amend the code or amend this code section, it would take an ordinance um, that would come before the council. We have to pro properly notice the public uh 14 days public notice have a public hearing and and subsequent you know that'd be a public hearing and then action agenda item so um at best what i can kind of pencil out depending on where we're at that's if we could get something in front of the council on august 20th typically when you open up the sign code it opens it all the way up <laughs> right because you get a lot of opinions a lot of comments so my my guess is that depending on the council's desire. Um, if it was as simple as that, we didn't go any further, we could get something in front of you on the 20th. Uh, it would be considered uh, on the next meeting, which would be, excuse me, August 20th would be the first, then the first meeting in September and third. third. Um, and then we have noticing requirements after that and then effective dates after that, which would be September 17th would be our best guess when a code amendment would become effective. Thank you. Yeah. Questions? Really, really, really long time. Just to open up the door and change them. If people want to comment, I hope that they do. All right. Anything else? Mr. Mayor, if, if you don't mind, um, anytime. Anytime we suspend any portion of our code, um, there's ramifications. As I mentioned, it opens up the size of, of any temporary sign. So this is for any lot in the city. It could be a 3,000 square foot lot, which we have in our neighborhood residential zone, up to you know tens of acres within our commercial areas. Um, our temporary sign code found limitations um, based on what um, the chamber's feedback was when we were going through it back in 2022. Um, to council, to staff, um, we address not only advertising for um, youth sports teams, but advertising for um, garage sales, campaign signs, um, for, like I said, real estate signs and things like that. Um, how to reduce clutter, how to maintain a look, you know, sense of community that you might have. Um, so that's, as staff, administering something like this may be may be fairly difficult because we won't have any teeth in the teeth quote unquote in in the administering of this of this code as far as size um i looked through about seven other cities um saw everything from six eight square feet in um Chehalis for political signs and temporary signs um one sign per lot in centralia port orchard was four square feet, 32 square feet in Aberdeen. So I, I didn't see anybody with, um, with you know, unlimited size, if you will. There, there was always some size regulation, at least in the seven cities I looked at in close proximity to us. Is there another section here that addresses Council Member Blush's concerns that would not open us up to 30 square foot signs or billboards down on railroad? Um, you know, the, I guess the building code would address it at that point. So if it's, if it's over six feet in height or six, uh, over six feet in height, the building code would administer anything like that. Um, again, it's, that's going to be a, an enforcement issue and a staffing, um, need, um, certainly the, um, with outside building code services right now as a building official, I don't know how we, um, proactive 
that service would be, we'd have to contact that consultant. Um, the other, the only other thing I can think of is kind of um, maybe a, obstructions, you know, sightline, sightline obstructions and things like that. The signs get too big, which is, which is covered in our code. We have to address right now, depending on no matter what the size of the sign is. Right. Um, but as signs get bigger, they could lend to more obstructions or more issues that are blowing down in the wind, um, particularly if they're temporary, right? If the bigger they get, the more susceptible they are to maybe some of those things, but. Um, so this motion itself does, does not help the issue at the school that they, they can still have their signs on the inside of the fence, but this motion doesn't help the outside of the fence is what I think what you wanted, correct? So I know now that they can face the signs inside, inside on the on the yard there. That's so, so that's so that's a, yeah, that's a way that they can address it without either way, whether we change it or not. But it's just, you know, there's a lot of these signs that are around town. There's a lot of people that like to put up signs, especially coming around this time of year. Um, there's a lot of event signs that go up. There's a lot of stuff in the city that you know <laughs> can, we can only, you know, have rules for some and not for all, you know doesn't work out well. So, and we put up our own temporary signs here in the city that are bigger than that. So, you know, we need to be fair to everybody. Can we, George, can we, can we amend this to, instead of December 31st until the soonest possible time that city manager can set up a study session, a public hearing for the sign code? Can we, instead of waiting to the end of the year, if he can do it in September, that would be great. Or, you know. Well, yeah, I, mean, I, I just want to give him up until the end of the year to get something put together that we can all, well, that we can have the public's input on, that they can come and go, hey, look, this is what we like to see. This is how we want this done going forward. And we can all come to the table knowing exactly where they want instead of just picking codes from, you know, around other places. Correct. No, no, I'm okay with that. What I'm saying is, is if we get it on the agenda sooner. Oh, yeah, no. And, we'll and then, then, okay. So I I can't I don't make motions I, I would entertain a motion to to just change this from December thirty first until as, as soon as the manager can get us on the agenda or study session public hearing and stuff like that. Um, if anybody would yes, we can put a committee together and to get right. public input. Okay, yeah, yeah that's fine. Is for anybody up for making yeah. that motion? I motion that we amended the suspension of twenty point three eight dot zero three zero section eight temporary sign code until we can get it uh, in front of a committee and a study session before the council. Okay. I'll second that. All right. So we got to deal with this. With Donna, we got to deal with the second motion first or the first motion? You have to resolve the second motion. Okay. So we have a motion to second for uh, to suspend. 2038.030 section A of temporary sign code until we can get it in front of a committee and a study session uh, as soon as our city manager can get it arranged for public input. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So that motion carries. So now the, the first motion Removing this, so do I just remove the thirty first out of the so motion? So I'll withdraw that motion. You, that was, yeah, you can either vote on or yeah, withdraw. I'll withdraw that motion. Okay, so I got to do anything for that. Okay, so so the second motion stands. Yep. All right. Okay. So, a little parliamentary procedure there, right? So, yeah. So if you don't mind for clarification, um, back to a study session. Are is this focused solely on temporary signs and and section A, or are we opening up the sign code in its entirety? Are we opening up the sign code and temporary signs? How what is the council my, my desire? Council request is that we just open up temporary signs. Because we worked for a year and a half, almost yeah. two years on the sign on the sign code. And the reason that we we worked on the sign code is because it was like 90 pages. And I yeah, and it was very, it was very, very old, complicated, and, and it did hard not to understand. It did not meet Reed versus Township of Gilbert, I believe it is, back in the East Coast. Um, that was a Supreme Court ruling that said you cannot regulate signs based on content, and so our code violated that in many instances. We weren't able to enforce in any case. So 
Um, and what we saw was is we saw a lot of clutter and we saw a lot of temporary signs um, taking up frontages, road frontages. They weren't maintained. They often, you know, blew over. If they blew over into uh, public property on the right of way, we could remove them. We can't go on public property and remove those temporary signs. Uh, we have to contact the property owner and go through an abatement process, essentially, if that happens. So um, that's why that sign code was kind of opened up, not only to make it more clear, but also address some of the some of the deficiencies that we were seeing within that old sign code. Okay. So okay. So temporary signs, is that what I'm hearing? Okay. Okay. All right. Our next meeting is Tuesday, August 6, 2024 at 6 p.m. I'm sorry, does council have any other items for discussion? Um, yeah, you mentioned movies in the park. Isn't there also a field day tomorrow at Neal Park? It's last week. Last week. That was last week? Yeah, Shoot. sorry. Um, yes, yeah, last week, uh, open field day. It looked like it was a good turnout. Um, it was hot <laughs> on Wednesday. But uh, um, yeah, as always, Neal Park is quite popular this time of year and very busy. And we're happy to have that as a community asset and available to our public. All right. Okay, our next meeting is Tuesday, August 6th at 6 p.m. We also have a meeting session on July 23rd at 6 p.m. This meeting is adjourned at 6.45 p.m.